Ah, a new year, new hopes. This is the first YouTube video of Real Turkey Channel in the year 2022. Presented by, as usual, you know him, Attila, the big guy, Yeshilada. Today, we're going to talk about Turkey's next step in economic policy, which is currency controls. But before I introduce the subject, and share with you my conclusion. Let me ask you the $64,000 question of 2022. Do you think that this humble soul, this minor YouTube influencer, whatever that means, will get the opportunity to shoot even one single video that says something good about the Turkish economy or politics? Let me know in the comments section, but I sincerely doubt it, unless, 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 unless President Erdogan decides to retire and spend the rest of his life with his family, children, and grandchildren. May he live 10,000 more years, by the way. Well, you know, this opening was actually to motivate today's story, because if you ask Attila Yeshilad or other dissidents, econ dissident economists, what is the biggest economic problem in Turkey? You will get an echo chamber and a chorus. It is Mr. Erdogan. His heterodox, that's unusual economic policies that just keep kicking us, kicking us, kicking us lower in the wall, into the abyss. Well, is this being politically biased? Am I being political when I say this? No, I mean, look, as of December, the official rate of consumer inflation was 36% in Turkey. That's the official rate. According to polls, the woman on the streets, street perceives inflation as somewhere between 50 and 100%. That's, that's funny by itself. I mean, it's not that... She thinks inflation is 50% or 60% or 70%. The poor woman is so confused. She's like, well, it could be 50%, it could be 100%. I don't know which day of the week is this. Today, we got November unemployment figures, and I'm quoting the broad measure of unemployment, which shot up about 22% again, 22%. I think that's worse than the American data somewhere in the middle of the Great Depression. Several polls reveal that up to 70% of the nation complain about poverty or high cost of living. And this is not all, folks. They are all going to get worse. All economic indicators will get worse because the depreciation of the Turkish lira can't be controlled. Let me show you a chart of Turkish Lira. This is the exchange rate dollar versus Turkish Lira. See, it started last year at an exchange rate of 7.34. Uh, it shot up all the way to 18. Yes, it, Turkish Lira lost more than 100% of its value sometime during the year. As I record this video, it's somewhere around 14, which means that Turkish Lira lost roughly, what, 90% uh, over the last 12 months. And of course, since Turkey is highly credit and import dependent, the depreciation of the Lira keeps pushing prices up. There is an order of pro procession inflation numbers. Usually, inflation increases start from domestic producer prices, and then they are reflected to the consumer prices. Not always, not one month later, not 100%, but we call the domestic producer prices the pipeline, which feeds into the pool that we call consumer price inflation. So if there's a lot of water, in the pipeline, there's a good reason to believe that inflation will get worse. What is Turkey's domestic producer price inflation? 80%. Yes, 
This is not 8%. This is 8 and 0 next to it. AD percent. 80. 80. Just as many comments do as if you complain about my English, which is, you know, I admit it's poor. Okay. So, okay, let me just, <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm laughing so hard. I, I can't shoot this video. Okay. Is there any reason to believe that Turkish lira will depreciate further during the year? Perhaps retracing its previous record of 18, that is, one to 18 Turkish liras by a dollar. Because if we move from this lower peak to the higher peak back, then Turkish inflation will also shoot back, shoot past 50%. And that's uh, essentially when the economy collapses. I mean, Turkey has a history of high chronic inflation dating back to 1990s, but Turkey is also a young nation. The median age is about 30, I believe. And most Turks don't really have the experience of living with high chronic inflation. People like me who are 60 still remember those days and act prudently, but younger people will panic. They simply will not know what to do. How would that manifest into the economy? Well, nobody will be using Turkish lira, which is a currency that depreciates, the value of which depreciates each day because of inflation. Everybody will switch their income as well as their wealth to gold, hard currencies like dollar, euro, Japanese yen, even Bulgarian leva because it is a hard currency compared to the Turkish lira. And since nobody wants to buy and sell with Turkish liras and there are not enough dollars and euros to allow economic activity to circulate, the economy will come to a, com a complete standstill. Is that possible? Yes, because currently the Turkish lira is being defended by the Central Bank of Turkey and state lenders. How? Well, even though they won't officially admit it, they sell hard currency through other institutions or traders. That is, if Turks buy more dollars and the dollar TL exchange rate shoots above 14%, we immediately see unanimous actors selling dollars to the market to, pr to press down the value of the dollar versus the market. But you see, central bank and state lenders have only limited amount of ammunition. That is, they cannot indefinitely uh, lower the pressure, the fever of the Turkish lira by selling reserves. They will run out of reserves. That is an economic law that's as strong as the law of gravity. You really can't escape it. Moreover, Turkey traditionally runs a small foreign deficit probably 1.5% to 2% of gross national product in 2022, and has huge amounts of debt that needs to be rolled over. Look at this chart. It's by one of the best-known strategists, emerging market strategist in London, Mr. Tim Ash. And this pie chart is the composition of Turkish debt. If, if you read the details, you will see that... Um, yeah, you will see that Turkey has to refinance $180 billion of maturing foreign debt within the next 12 months. And of course, uh, if the lira is depreciating each minute against the dollar, well, foreign lenders are not very likely to lend generously to Turkey. Moreover, nobody in Turkey may wish to borrow in dollars or other hard currencies simply because they really have no means of using that money in investments or buying inventories, etc. What I'm saying is, if the central bank reserves don't run out because Turks are buying dollars and euros around the clock, it will run out 
simply because at this rate of depreciation, foreign lenders will not renew their maturing loans to Turkey. So, really, we're in a bind. And Erdogan has tried everything. He tried what we call an insurance for TL deposits, which means if I put my money into the bank in a TL deposit, and the interest rate on that TL deposit at maturity is lower than the rate of depreciation of the Turkish lira, the difference will be paid by the government, by the treasury. Currently, no buyers. As I did, most Turks uh, subscribe to this program with their existing Turkish lira deposits, but nobody is stupid enough to convert her hard-earned dollar and euro savings into Turkish liras to benefit from this deposit scheme. Why? Because Erdogan has no credibility. I mean, I convert my hard currencies in Turkish liras, and the next day Mr. Erdogan said, sorry, I, this is a silly program. I, you know, I'm, I'm quitting the scheme, and you're not getting anything. Turkey is a country like that. And then, as I've said, the central bank is selling hard currencies to stop the depreciation of the Turkish lira, but the lira is not appreciating in value, and we have all these foreign debt payments coming up, and as inflation jumps, more Turks will realize that keeping Turkish lira for any reason, whether it be the reason for transactions or a store of value, is foolish simply because it's like ice uh, in August summer, it melts immediately, loses its value against inflation. In that case, the only thing that, uh, sorry, the only thing that can be done to avert a painful crisis, a balance of payments crisis, or a confidence crisis, is to impose currency controls. Technically speaking, the economists call these capital controls, but I think for the lay watcher, lay spectator, the word currency controls makes more sense. What are currency controls? Well, they come in a variety of forms, from plain vanilla to chocolate chip and mint, which is my favorite ice cream brand, by the way. The simplest and the most draconian way of capital controls is declaring to the world that Turkey will no longer allow hard currency to flow out of its financial system to the rest of the world. Turkey will not even pay off its maturing foreign debt. But I don't think anybody is foolish enough to do that because the next day uh, the world will cease lending to Turkey uh, Turkish companies will go bankrupt. Moreover, angry creditors will start confiscating Turkish assets abroad. Anything they can get their hands on. You know, if a Turkish ship lands at the port of New York, uh, you know, one creditor could uh, put a line on that ship until the Turkish government pays off its debt to her. And Turkish Central Bank and all banks, by law or by Tradition keeps some hard currency deposits abroad. In correspondent banks, these two will be confiscated or impounded. A milder form is to say, look, if you are a non-resident entity, that is, if you are not Turkish, uh, you can lend to Turkey, and Turkish entities are allowed to pay off interest and uh, you know, the principle of the loan when it matures. But Turks can't send foreign currencies abroad except for reasons of buying imported goods. That's more sensible. It has been tried several times with, uh, you know, different degrees of success. Even a softer version of capital controls or currency controls is to say, look, you know, your FX deposits in the banks are safe 
as a government, I'm not confiscating them, but you cannot withdraw more than a certain amount per month, simply because we don't have a hard currency shortage, but we have a liquidity shortage in the system. So, for instance, Attila Yeshilada, say, has $1 million in X bank. One day he will receive a letter from the government, which will state to him that from now on, his account is frozen. He's only allowed to withdraw, say, $10,000 per month. And he can't transfer the rest abroad or to a different Turkish entity. Is Turkey moving in that direction? Am I just making this up? Or is there any evidence that Turkey is actually at the verge of imposing currency controls? Well, let's look at the evidence here. First of all, of course, uh, you know, written documentation. What do the experts think? Stratfor is one of the leading private think tanks of the world that writes about world affairs and sells its research for a subscription fee. I'm not going to read you the details of this, you know, Stratford report, but I think the headline is suggestive enough. Stratford, Turkey takes a first step towards capital controls. And I'm going to keep this on the screen for a few seconds, just in case you are interested writing down the link and reading the original article. So, Stratfor is an expert voice in terms of emerging markets, and what they say, I think, is supportive of my thesis. There are others, such as Mohammed Al Aryan, who I think comes from Pakistan and is considered the most brilliant contemporary strategist. He used to be uh, at PIMCO, the world's largest fixed income fund. Now I think he's with Allianz, but he also writes commentaries for Financial Times, Bloomberg, Project Syndicate, etc., etc. Alarian introduces a time perspective to the problem. This was written three weeks ago, by the way. Alarian says Turkey can't take much more of its currency crises. In other words, something needs to be done. And he also mentions capital controls, but decides that their attractiveness is dimmed by the potential and structural reputational damage to a country that has flourished on being open to global trade or investment, which is fair. I have no problems with this argument, but let's look at Tim Ash, which I mentioned before, who makes a very strong case why currency controls may be needed. Again, I have linked this. I hope it's visible. visible. It is uh, PA Turkey's English language sister website, paturkey.com. Uh, Timash argues that in as much as Turkey has been traditionally able to roll over, that's to refinance all of its maturing foreign debt, this year, the situation may change simply because Erdogan and his cabinet ministers are telling global investors that their money is no longer needed. And Timash argues that, well, I mean, as an investor, if I'm not wanted in a country, why should I go there? And banks are investors as well. So I think there is sufficient a priori, that's logical reasons, that Turkey may step into currency controls. And here is another article by Bloomberg, which is definitive proof that the switch to a currency control regime has started. This is about a week ago. And the headline reads, Turkey tightens oversight of currency market as lira weakens. Again, I'm leaving the link on the screen so you can jot it down and read it if you don't trust me. But the gist of the article written by Bloomberg's Turkish uh, journalist is that there is now informal pressure on individuals and companies which 
with a which wish to make large FX deposit withdrawals. And there's a lot of questioning if Turkish individuals or companies wish to send foreign currency abroad. So this is the way it works uh, in actuality. Suppose again, Attila Yeshilara Holdings Incorporated goes to his bank and says, I have $100 million in my corporate account. I want to transfer $10 million of that to an account in Switzerland. The bank say, wait a second, wait a second. Let me ask the authorities. The authorities are the central bank and Turkey's banking regulator, regulator BRSA. Whether that type of a transaction is sanctioned, and the authorities will say, oh, wait a second, we better go and check this guy out, whether this is a fraudulent transaction. Of course, at the end, they may allow it. But the question is, this type of questioning and procedural delays introduce uh, what we call uncertainty uh, or a reputational cost to the transaction. If I know that any time I send money abroad, I'm going to be investigated by authorities, then I would be fearful of doing so in the future because at some point I may be subject to a lawsuit or even more scaringly to a tax audit. And you know, next to the death angel of death, the tax audit is the scariest thing that the homo sapiens can experience. But there is other evidence that suggests Turkey is already moving to currency controls. For instance, uh, the central bank or the government issued a decree compelling exporters to surrender, that is to transfer, 25% of their hard currency earnings to central bank accounts at the current exchange rate. And in return, they receive TL. In a free market economy, this is unconscionable. unconscionable. Why? Besides, exporters usually need most of their hard currency earnings to buy new inputs and raw materials to export more. So that too is a sign that Turkey is moving to currency controls. And the last, the least, and the funniest example of Turkey stepping towards currency controls is that when foreigners buy a house in Turkey, of course, the transaction has to go through the bank. The bank must surrender all of the proceeds of that house sale to the central bank. So the central bank is scrambling madly to find some hard currency to sustain the system. But of course, it will not work. And I'll tell you why it won't work. First of all, let's look at the survey by ARIA. It's at the end of uh, 2021. And the question is, according to you, what is the most important problem of Turkey? As you see, in December, 67.9% of the participants said economics, cost of living, poverty. Another 13.4% said it's unemployment. In other words, there is such economic misery that Mr. Erdogan's heterodox policies, which deliver nothing but more poverty to the nation, will no longer be sustained. At some point, we'll experience a voters' revolt. And that day, by the way, I'm talking about a voters' revolt, which simply means they will switch their parties. That doesn't mean an actual reward, revolt. Or people, on, it's not like going to be like 6th of January in front of the U.S. Congress in the United States. <laughs> yeah, advanced democracy. Uh, anyhow, there's another piece of indication here. It's by Metropol. It also dates to December of last year. And the question is, faith or confidence in the government's economic policies? Over 2021, 75.8% of participants said that they have less confidence in this government's economic policies. Only 8.6% expressed 
any kind of confidence. What does all of this mean? The lack of confidence means that no matter what scheme Mr. Erdogan introduces to defend the currency is not going to work simply because people don't trust Erdogan and his government will keep, the, will keep their promises, which means that they will continue to buy hard currencies with their income and with their wealth, which will create more demand for hard currencies. The central bank will at some point run out of reserves or its reserve level will fall so low that foreign lenders will no longer trust Turkey with their funds. In either case, Turkish Lira will continue its endless process of depreciation, which will push up inflation because we are an import-dependent country. And inflation will increase complaints about economic policy. As I've already told you, 67.9% complained about uh, economy at the end of 2021. So in a few months' time, voters will want Mr. Erdogan either to change his policies or to go to elections. I don't think Mr. Erdogan is capable of changing his policies anymore, simply because to stop the bleeding, to stop the economic misery, all he has to do is allow the central bank to raise rates. Tight monetary policy or higher interest rates are proven to be the most effective remedy both against inflation and a weaker currency. Since he doesn't even bother to take that simple step, there is no reason that he will introduce any kind of meaningful reforms or innovative new economic policies that will persuade people to shift out of hard currencies into Turkish lira. At the end, this is really a race between Mr. Erdogan and the Turkish nation to see which one is going to collapse first. Since Turkish nation is roughly 2,000 years old, whereas Mr. Erdogan is less than 70, I am betting that the Turkish nation will not collapse and Mr. Erdogan will have to call elections or retire. As I've said, don't expect anything better from this YouTube channel in terms of good news for the rest of 2022. But hopefully, one way or other, Turkey will hold elections during the year and it will either legitimize Mr. Erdogan's policies if he wins or he will be deposed democratically and the opposition will come to administration and adopt orthodox rather than heterodox policies. Please get your stabs. Omicron may be less fatal than Delta, but nobody wants to spend a couple of weeks in quarantine or in hospitals. Stay well. This is Atilla Eşilada for Real Turkey Channel saying goodbye from Istanbul.